Hi, this video is for a short overview of Chapter 1 content. So Chapter 1 uh, starts our study of optics. It covers uh, properties of light and some uh, background knowledge about light that maybe you have seen in your earlier physics class. If not, this is the chapter that covers it so that everyone <laughs> starts this, uh, this topic from some place. Um, even level. Um, so when you go to section 1.1, the propagation of light, it'll cover some historical facts about uh, light, how speed of light was first measured and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, now, because of the topics break between the University Physics Volume 2, which ended with Maxwell's equations and electromagnetic waves and volume 3, which now starts with the propagation light, it won't quite explicitly refer to electromagnetic nature of light too much. Um, in your uh, lectures that's linked from the Canvas site, you will see more explicit connection of, uh, for example, propagation speed of light to Maxwell's equations, um, if you're interested. So um, that's section 1.1. It also covers um, index of refraction, a little bit on that later. The next few sections, 1.2 through 1.5, covers um, what we would consider uh, the background knowledge of geometric optics. Uh, you will see light rays being drawn, light propagating in a straight line. So when you look at law of reflection, which I hope most people are intuitively familiar with, how light reflects on mirror, for example. Instant angle is equal to the reflected angle. This is what we call surface normal or perpendicular to surface. That's how we measure all the angles in optics. And uh, the way we illustrate light in these scenarios is with rays of light. And these rays um, give name to what we call geometric optic that uh, you are going to see more of in chapter 2. In section 1.3, it covers refraction and law of refraction, or what we call Snell's law. It describes the uh, angle at which light rays come in uh, between the at the boundary of two transparent media angle at which light rays come in and angle at which, which light rays go out. So this figure illustrates that medium 2 is the medium with a greater index of refraction, or it's medium 2 is the medium where light travels slower than um, it shows when the light is going from medium 1 to medium 2. The light ray bends so that it's closer to the surface normal. Uh, or if you reverse the uh, direction, then when the light rays go from medium 2 to medium 1, it bends away from the surface normal. And this is quantitatively described by Snell's law. And um, if you're looking for index of refraction, the index of refraction, uh, you won't find the table here. You will find the table in section 1.1 where we are talking about speed of light, both in vacuum, this is the speed of light in vacuum, and speed of light in matter. So uh, if you are looking for how much does the light slow down when it's in water, for example, this is where you would find it, 1.333. So the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum over speed of light in water is 1.333. So as you're looking at refraction, um, and as you look at this picture, you might wonder, or someone might wonder, if the light ray bends away from the surface normal, could you arrange the situation so that maybe the light is coming at a shallower angle or you know bigger theta too? Could you set, up, or maybe the difference in the index of refraction is larger? index of refraction in medium 1, it's much smaller than in this index of refraction in medium 2. In such hypothetical scenario, could you set it up so that this outgoing angle, according to Snell's law, would be greater than 90 degrees? Maybe. 
that consideration leads to what's called the total internal reflection. So total internal reflection is what happens when you um, get these arrangements set up so that the light ray that would have uh, refracted through um, when you work out the math, if it's going to be greater than 90 degrees, then there can be no refracted ray. So all the uh, intensity of light that comes in has to be reflected. That's what total internal reflection describes. And the critical angle at which this happens is the angle of incidence that would exactly give refracted angle of 90 degrees. So this section uh, describes total internal reflection in more detail. Take a look. It's interesting consideration. And it's both interesting and practical. And you'll have some more questions that involve total internal reflection and some lab activities that involve total internal reflection. Uh, this portion is, um, I guess it's a, a bit of a side topic in this class. So it explains things like rainbows or uh, some uh, rainbow colored things you might have seen with a prism. And uh, it, what it is, is it's a relatively simple phenomenon that when you look at the index of refraction of some material, it's uh, wavelength dependent. That's what this portion refers to. In, index of refraction of uh, red lighted water has one value and index of refraction of uh, violet, almost ultraviolet light in water has a different value. And this difference is usually very small. Um, so in the common situations of light simply refracting through the water, you wouldn't notice the different colors refracting through slightly different angles. But in certain scenarios, like with a glass prism where these differences in angle get magnified through uh, multiple refractions or in um, how a rainbow happens in a water droplet approximating it as a sphere or with a circular cross section. Uh, these multiple points of refraction spreads out the light beams and it uh, shows up as rainbows. And these uh, geometric considerations, they are quite interesting. You can kind of figure out what the relative angle between the sun and the rainbow must be. I used to ask questions on that, but I don't anymore because the working on geometry can be a little bit challenging, but it's a fun thing to consider. Let me know if you are interested. Um, I'm happy to over it with you. Um, and the, uh, with the double rainbows, the kind of uh, the a series of refractions and reflections that light ray goes through. So this is for uh, the inner part of the, the primary rainbow and the outer part for the double rainbow, it involves multiple reflections within the water droplet and it has a slightly different angle and uh, also the colors are reversed. It's, uh, <laughs> So now the remaining two sections relate to what we might call physical optics or um, so sections 1.2 through 1.5, we could almost ignore the nature of what light is. We could treat light as something that travels like a ray and, uh, and it, uh, it's a speed of changes um, from time to time when it goes from one transparent medium to other. We didn't quite have to think of light as being wave or light as being electromagnetic wave. So next to two sections, 1.6 and 1.7, are the sections that describe the wave nature of light. So Huygens' principle, by the way, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. I'll just say Huygens if I'm mispronouncing it, sorry. <laughs> um, Huygens' principle, this is something that we are going to appeal to more later as we are dealing with the interference and actually more of a diffraction. So it's a little bit too much right now. I'm not quite sure why your textbook includes this as part of chapter one. But it is useful for driving um, some, of the, uh, some of the things that we take for granted in geometric optics. So in lecture, I actually use this figure to uh, derive Snell's law um, from... Uh, considering that um, this uh, picture that comes from uh, Huygens' principle, the, the consideration of these wavefronts, 
and um, you can take a look at that. So, so this would be immediate use right now. At the moment, if uh, you want to kind of skim, skip through this, it's fine. Uh, we'll uh, refer to this later when we have to deal with the diffraction and the wave phenomena of uh, light in chapters 3 and 4. The next section, 1.7, also deals with uh, physical optics in the sense that you can't really talk about polarization without considering that light is a transverse electromagnetic wave. So transverse means the oscillating thing in light wave is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So if, uh, so if uh, light uh, propagates from left to right, then the thing that's doing the oscillating is going to, going to be oscillating um, perpendicular to that direction. So maybe up and down or front and back. Um, so it'll, the kind of the plane with plane in which the oscillation happens, it'll be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. And the best way to describe polarization, direction of polarization, is through the electromagnetic nature of light. So a light that's propagating in one direction has electric field oscillating, magnetic field oscillating, in such a way when you do electric field cross product with magnetic field, then the, 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 the direction of the cross product is in the direction of the propagation. Um, so for the purpose of polarization, we use the direction in which electric fields are aligned. And, um, and so all this consideration it requires you to think of light as an electromagnetic wave. So that's why I'm lumping this in the physical optics portion. Um, and polarization of light is uh, hugely uh, practical again. Um, and so as you read about like polarity filters and uh, the Brewster's angle or polarization by reflection, um, you know, this might feel like something that you haven't encountered. Although um, polarization by reflection, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting to consider. It's uh, interesting to look at. It, um, it connects to law of refraction because the angle of incidence at which the maximum polarization happens, 100%, is one where the refracted light would be at 90 degrees to the reflected light. Um, it, it has to do with the dipole, uh, dipole radiation, and all that, <laughs> that we don't really need to get into. So this is chapter one. It uh, introduces a few uh, property background, uh, a few properties of light that's uh, important as a background material. So please take a look at it. Some of the more important things you will see covered in lecture, um, like with the uh, refraction, derivation of law of refraction, and some discussion of polarization of light. And um, until next time.